Hey, welcome to the Saturday Morning Radio Show, CEO Man and Econo Man. And I don't know about you, Dennis, but it's good to be back. It's a new year. It's a new economy, and it's new music. Happy New Year. This is awesome, isn't it? So how many times have you forgotten to write 2013 on a piece of paper already and had to scratch it out? Zero. Put, absolutely uh, zero, because I do no paper. Uh, oh, My, mine's all word processing. Come on, this is 21st century. Oh, I see. I see. I still do paper because I'm old, probably is why. So, hey, we've got a great show for you today, and this is uh, this is coming uh, usually live, but today I think we're doing only uh, only the archive. We've got some fun technical difficulties today, but we have an awesome guest today. We have Nathan Osmond is joining us via Skype today, and we'll be talking to us about running a business, especially if you are an artist. So if you, if you uh, have a talent drawing or playing the drums or singing, then uh, he's going to share some great tips for you that are real specific for you. Uh, we've got a lot of other things that, uh, that we're going to go over today too, but those are the, those are the main topics that we're going to cover. And we're, we're going to just cut out a couple of the commercials. We're still going to run a few, but we're going to manually do this today so we can give you tons of content today so uh, nathan welcome well thank you dennis and dewey it's good to be here with you guys yippee ki yippee <laughs> 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 we're, <country>. <laughs> we're doing country uh, for those of you that uh, live under a rock uh, nathan osmond is a <laughs> is a uh, world-renowned country western uh a musician, and uh, that's where the Yippie came from, I assume. <laughs> now, that's from Little Rock, Arkansas. I don't know if you know this about, about me, but uh, I got Okie in my blood. Do I'm, you really? Oh, yeah, oh. my mom's side of the family are Texans and Okies. I always thought you were Okie Dokie. Ah, uh, Dewey Okie Dokie. <laughs> okay, Dennis Okie Dokie. <laughs> well, welcome, Nathan. Our, well, our thank list. you for having me here on the show. I really appreciate it. I've, I've asked the fans to all tune in today, and uh, especially those that are looking to get into uh, the music business, those who are really trying to get discovered and find out how they can make it in this crazy, crazy business. It's a lot of fun. You've got to, first of all, have a lot of passion for doing this. And obviously, I was surrounded by it growing up, but coming from the Osmond family, and uh, I'm just having a blast. I have the best fans out there, and I just want to say hello to all those who are tuning in to listen today. Hey, welcome to our show. We're glad to have you all there. So to, to set the record straight, you, uh, you, you don't just happen to have the same name. You've got uh, some blood uh, relation there with your, your dad is Alan, is that right? That's right, Alan Osmond. He's the oldest of the original brothers, so Donnie and Marie, are, I'm their favorite nephew. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, of course. <laughs> and, and They've you're... got a lot to choose from. There's 57 grandkids on the Osmond side. Only 17 of those are girls. So we wow. have a lot of boys. I have seven brothers. I grew up singing with them, you know, the Osmond second generation. And But for the last seven, seven years or so, I've been working on my, my solo career as a country artist. And they've had a lot of fun. In fact, we've just had four consecutive number one hits over the last two years. And just very, very excited. We'll be releasing a new single here this month, which I'm very, very excited about. So I'll be announcing that here shortly. But uh, anyway, just uh, very excited to, to start a whole new year. Got a new game plan for, uh, for success this year. And we're hitting it hard. Hey, that is great to hear. Well, the first thing we want to do is a lot of, a lot of people that I've talked to and said, hey, we're going to have Nathan Osmond on the show and talk about business. Uh, they've kind of said, well, he probably just walked right into success because of the Osmond name. <laughs> so can, can you uh, tell us about how easy your business that. was? <laughs> that's just not fair, Nathan. Nathan, that's not fair. I tell you, it's amazing how long it takes to become an overnight success. <laughs> 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 it's fun. I was taught to work hard as a kid and also to work smart. You know, my father was the oldest of the performing brothers, the Osmonds, and you know, because he was a, he became a regular on the Andy Williams shows at the age of 12. He hard, he could hardly read music. And so here he is plunking out note by note these 12-page arrangements for his brothers to learn. They couldn't afford to send uh, all five or seven or nine of their brothers, you know, to to go and perform and and, and, and learn all these instruments and take all those lessons. So they'd have to pay for one class. One brother would go learn the instrument, come back and teach the rest of them, and they'd have to have something new every single week. Andy Williams would come up to him and say, hey, can you guys tap dance? Before they could say no, my grandpa would jump in and say, you bet they can. And they would go learn how to tap dance that week, and they'd come in and they'd knock them out. They were known as the one-take Osmonds. In fact, uh, he asked them if they could 
ice skate. And before they could say no, my grandpa said, you bet they can. And <laughs> they looked at him like he was crazy. And they went down, they rented some skates, they learned how to do all these tricks and everything, came in, and with the dancing ice skating bear and everything else, they, they blew everybody out of the water. In fact, that very same week, the ice capades called the Osmonds and said, hey, you guys are real good, you want to go on the road with us? They had not been on a, you know, on a pair of skates a week before that. So I learned that it's amazing what you can accomplish if you set your heart to it and you commit yourself and you go 100% all the way. And so uh, that's that's the upbringing I had, and you got to have that tenacity in business in order to succeed. Oh, that is great to hear. So, so tell me then for yourself, when you got to that age of discovery where it's like, hey, I got a little talent here. I might want to do something about it. Did did the Osmond name uh, did it help you? Did it kind of stand in your way, or what happened? You know, as a kid, it was actually you know kind of a bonus. It really got people going. Oh, isn't that cute? It's kind of a little you know, uh, a neat little thing. Let's um, see, another second generation of Osmond boys. And when you're kids, it works. But as you get older, you know, the thing is I've learned that Osmond is a brand, and I am not ashamed of it in the least, at least bit. So uh, I was, I almost though considered not using it. In fact, Michael Jackson pulled Donnie aside in his car one time and told him, you got to change your name. It's poison. <laughs> and he's like, what? He says, yeah, they, all they want to do is remember puppy love. They don't want to let you grow up. It's like having the last name Brady. If you came from the Brady Bunch, you saw what happened to them. So he had to actually release his Soldier of Love album under a, a mystery artist. Uh, he went over to, to Europe and uh, talked to some friends over there, and they said, uh, let's do this. Let's test this out. And there was one DJ in New York City who started playing this song, this mystery artist, and because, because it was his station, all these other stations started playing it. They didn't know who it was, and all these people fell in love with the song. Well, by the time they realized it was Donny Osmond, they couldn't deny that they liked the song, and that's how Donny had to break back into the business secretively. People wouldn't let him grow up. And so I consider not using the name Osmond simply because I didn't want people to prejudge my country music. My stuff doesn't sound like anything Osmond you've ever heard. It is true blue country, and I have guys like Lone Star playing on my tracks. I have uh, Faith Hills people, Dirk Bentley's guitarist. I went to Nashville and worked with the best. Worked with Gary Baker, who wrote the song I Swear, and I'm already there. And, and we've had four consecutive number one hits thanks to that. But the thing is, is that it's a double-edged sword, Osmond is. Uh, does it get a foot in the door? Absolutely. Does it get people's attention? Does it maybe pique their curiosity? I think so. But the thing is, you've got to have the goods. And Donnie told me that, too. He says, Nathan, people go on American Idol. They go on America's Got Talent because they want to be part of a brand. They want to be part of something that people recognize that's big and important and, and, and you know relevant right now. And so he says, you've already got something like that. It's called Osmond. They don't camp on it. Don't abuse it. Let it be a layer in the cake, but let it get a foot in the door. But you got to have the goods. And so I took his advice. Marie didn't think I should use Osmond. And of course, she changed her story later on. But uh, the thing is, is that you got to be who you are, especially in country music. You got to be proud of who you are. And that's one thing I love about it. It's just real. It's raw, and that's what I love about country. It tells a good story. And uh, you know, especially uh, the people I've worked with in country music. They're the most down-to-earth, real people, and I figured if I came out under a different name, maybe Nathan George, which is my middle name, you know, that sounds country, but Osmond will come out later, and I think it would have blown up in my face. Uh, that, that's good that you uh, you learned from, from your family, too, and I had never heard that story about uh, Donnie having to record that other song yeah. in a different yeah, name. Yeah, Soldier so. of Love. Was, uh, that's, that became a number one hit for him, and uh, in the way it was Peter Gabriel who sat him down and says, Donnie, let's do this. Let's release it as a... As a um, uh, mystery artist, and uh, he said, "Okay, I'm trusting you on this," and it, it worked. It oh, worked because people, once they fell in love with the song, they couldn't deny that they liked Donny Osmond. Now, yeah. Now, tell, can you tell us a little bit about some of your? I mean, it's real easy to talk about our our successes, but what are some of the real struggles that you've had uh, getting your business started? What What do you think are some of the either well, mistakes or errors or just bad luck that happened for you that you overcame <laughs> well you learn you don't have to give any names this is one thing i've found is that uh you got to surround yourself with people of excellence people that know what the heck they're talking about some advice that i got from donnie which uh, i recommend if you're getting into this business or any business that you have mentors that you have people that know what the heck they're talking about that have the experience in the business that you're going in that can steer and guide you and 
one thing he told me is, Nathan, be, beware of yes men, as he put them. Oh, you're the best. You're the greatest. Oh, there's nothing you can do wrong, you know? And just they, they, all they do is blow smoke in your face and uh, just paint the sky blue. And he says, no, you don't want to hang around negative people, but be surround yourself with people that will tell you, hey, you're a little flat. Fix it, you know? Or you could drop 10 pounds. Or, you know, people that will be, that are honest enough with you to be able to give you uh, effective feedback that will really help you to succeed. Um, so that was some good advice that he gave me. And I've seen some of those guys. I've had to kind of dodge a couple of them. I've been very blessed to have relatives who have been in this business who have sold over 100 million records that are on my advisory team. And I set up an advisory team, and Donnie and Marie are on that. But I also have other people besides family that are on there as well that uh, steer and guide me. I've learned that uh, there's you got to be uh, you got to have thick skin in this business because not everybody is going to like you. I've had some people write terrible things about me and say terrible things, and the thing is you got to be okay with that. And that is not easy. It's not easy to you have people poke fun at you and all this other stuff. But the thing is, at the end of the day. You got to be cool in your own skin. You got to be happy with who you are, with your art, with your music, and your product, whatever that might be. And so he told me, Nate, you got to have thick skin, and I've learned that. Um, some mistakes, I, I don't know. I'm still learning. <laughs> but you know, but, uh, one thing I I did learn early on is that you don't need to tell everybody everything that you're doing at first. The thing is, is so, so often we're trying to get validation. We're trying to get people to say, oh, yeah, you can do it. Come on, buddy. I believe in you. Well, guess what? Sometimes uh, I talk to myself quite often, and sometimes people think that's crazy. Actually, I think everybody does it. Some of the most uh, riveting conversations you'll ever have are the ones you have with you. Sometimes the only nice things you're ever going to hear about yourself are the ones you say to you. So be good to you. You know, I grew up in a family where there, you have to speak up to be heard. There's eight boys in our family, and I was the shy one. Thank goodness I had a, a good coach, a good father who, who believed in me. You know, I, when I was a kid, I went on Good Morning America with my with my brothers. We were promoting this Christmas show we were doing with the Osmonds. Anyway, uh, I was shy. I was very very quiet. And um, Joan London singled me out on national television and said, "So Nathan, do you like this entertainment business?" You know, and guess who froze on national television? <laughs> <laughs> Two words came out of my mouth. I said, uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and that was it. My father jumped in and saved the interview. And at the end of the show, he pulled me aside and he said, Nathan, it's a talk show. Talk. People want to hear what you have to say. And on one end of the spectrum, I was really embarrassed. I felt like I had let my family down. But on the other he said, people want to hear what you have to say. And he coached me and he worked with me and he realized he was being too much of a crutch. So my father didn't go well on with us when we went on Regis and Kathy Lee show. He, he, he coached us. It was like we were going out to play football. He says, uh, it's television, stand up, do something funny, run out in the audience, laugh with us. So we had to stand on our own two feet. He pushed us out of the nest real fast. And I grew from that. Um, and we've had a lot of success that uh, when it came to uh, you know getting older and stuff, my father got to the point where he started to downplay the music business. He wanted us to just go to college, just wanted us to uh, have normal jobs and find security and stability in doing that. Anyway, that wasn't good enough for me because I really wanted to continue doing what I loved doing. And I figured, you know, if he had that success, you know, I, I'm not doing it because he did it. I'm doing it because I have passion for it. But I knew that if I told my family that I was going to go out to Nashville and pursue my dream, they'd tr probably try and talk me out of it. And uh, so I figured, let's just go make this thing happen. So I made friends with the guys from Lone Star. You know, I had a chance to work with them here in Utah and told them, you know, it's my dream and my passion to write a song with you guys. You guys don't ever do a bad song. And sure enough, you know, Dean Sams, the founding member of the group Lone Star, gave me his e email address and said, well, why don't you come out to Nashville and we'll write. Well, that's the key to success. If you're listening to this, you've got to tell people what your dream is at first. You've got to ask for help. And that's the thing that I had to do early on is I just asked. I told him what I wanted to do, and he gave me his email address. Well, I realized early on and throughout life is that you don't wait for your ship to come in. You, you swim out to meet it. And that's what I had to do is I didn't tell any of my family members what I was doing. But I booked my – I got my ticket, everything. I was going out to Nashville to write with Dean. We wrote this great song. I thought, wow, they tied it up because, you know, <clears throat> that's, that's unheard of. I mean, you go write your first song in Nashville and one of your favorite bands ties it up. But wow. they did. But the thing is, about a week later, their lead singer of 14 years, Richie McDonald, announced that he was going solo. 
So I'm going, oh, great, there goes my big break out the window. You know, there, there goes the, the song. So I was thinking fast on my feet saying, free demo. We just cut a song. I said, Dean, if you're not going to record that song, do you mind if I do? Here's my dream again. It's always been my dream to record my own country album. And uh, he says, well, heck, why don't you come to my house? We'll do it right. So I did. And that's how my whole project got started. Hmm. And then I went down. I, I, you got to network with people in business. Um, my Aunt Marie had a great bass player you know, growing up. His name is Gary Baker. He wrote a song called I Swear. He wrote the song I'm Already There for Lone Star. And I said, I'm going to call him. So I took these four songs I cut with Lone Star down there to Alabama, and we finished up the album. Well, then you think, okay, he's going to get a, re a record deal. No, you've got to go shop. It doesn't matter if your last name is Osmond you got to go work it. So I went out to Nashville, and I just started knocking doors. I started introducing myself. Did my family know any of this was going on? No. In fact, you know what, Dennis and Dewey? I was actually working as a seminar MC, director. I was, I was doing motivational speaking. I was doing about 180-some-odd conferences a year, and my schedule was crazy. I didn't even have time to go do music, and they weren't going to let me off. I was their MC. Well, this company I was working for, you know, I was thinking, how am I going to get out to Nashville and record? Well, uh, my brother's wedding was coming up, and so I told them I needed a week off to go to my brother's wedding. <laughs> and they looked at me like I was nuts. He said, you need a whole week to, off to go to a wedding? I said, do you know how many Osmonds there are? Do you know how long that line is? <laughs> you know, I finally convinced them that I needed a week off to go to my brother's wedding. It's like a lie. Know, and like that's a the key is that I was going to stop through Nashville to record my first four songs of my album. The, one of the keys to su success is you don't always tell everybody everything you know, and um, that's what I had to do. I just had to kind of just go do it and then talk about it. I brought home four songs to my brother's wedding with Lone Star playing on it and all these great names. And they said, when did this happen? And I was like, exactly. When <laughs> nobody was looking, I was working my tail off to yeah. make my dream come true. And that's the thing you got to do in 2013 is you got to stop talking about what you want to do and simply just go make it happen, even if it means you got to get creative. Yeah, that is some awesome advice. And I just... My my whole insides were stirring when you were saying that because as I consult with business leaders uh, in different industries, that, that definitely is the thing that happens. They do talk a lot about here's what I I'm planning to do or I want to do. Uh, yeah, that, let's analyze this and let's do, stop talking and go do. Right. And the power to do is in the doing, and you'll learn a lot as you go do. A lot more than you will just sc scanning the internet and googling this and that. I mean, you can learn a lot. But the key is there's nothing like real life experience. And the thing is, is surround yourself with people that can help you avoid the pitfalls. And that's what I did. I, I, I like to surround myself with people that will be honest with myself. You know, in our family, if you're flat, fix it. I so like that. I, I found that I gained my family's respect. Um, I think that they're a lot more supportive now because they've seen that I didn't ask favors. I didn't ask Donnie and Marie, hey, will you call your friend and, and hook me up? No, no one hooked them up. You know what the Osmonds did? When they were kids, they went down to, to L.A., just like everybody does that wants to get in this business. They went down and tried to, to, to get their big break. Well, one thing that my grandpa did is he went and bought one of these maps of where the stars live. And he figured, and you'd probably get arrested if you did this nowadays, but <laughs> he went and bought this map of where the stars live, and they just went up to their houses and knocked on their doors. Wow. <laughs> I talk about gutsy. You gotta be gutsy. Well, he went up to the the the, the um, oh the Lennon sisters' home. They were on the uh, Lawrence Welk show, and knocked on their doors. And they they weren't there yet. You know, they were actually had just run to the store or something. They were going to be right back. So they waited around and came back. And and there they they met these these girls, and they were like starstruck. They thought, wow, here they are. You know, the the girls we see on television. And they said, well, sing us a song. So they did. And the Lennon sisters sang back to them and back and forth, and they became good friends, and they were really impressed. you got to be ready when that opportunity comes because they said, we got to introduce you to our boss, Lawrence Welk. So they took him over, and for whatever reason, he's in the other room. He won't even come out and shake their hand. Just broke their hearts, right? Huh. So anyways, uh, you know, they said, well, let's, you know, while we're down here, let's go to Disneyland, you know, and um, then we'll go back to Utah and live normal lives. Well, they went to Disneyland. They look like a group. They're all dressed in their same uniforms and costumes and stuff. And as they walk into Main Street, USA, 
down come the Dapper Dans on their bicycles, those that barbershop quartet, uh-huh. those things at Disneyland, you know. And they noticed these boys that are all dressed alike, and they said, you guys look like a group. And they said, well, we are. And he says, well, well, sing us a song. So the same thing happened right there on Disneyland Main Street. They started singing back and forth. Everybody thought that was part of the, the whole scene there on Disneyland because it was just set up perfectly. Anyway, this guy said, you've got to meet our boss, who happened to be Andy Williams' father. Anyway, that's how they led to, were led to be on Andy's show, and uh, the rest is history. But the thing is, is they, hadn't, they didn't have any hookups. They didn't have anybody that gave them a big break. They had to be ready. They had to go and be hungry, like my, one of my mentors, Les Brown, says. Yep. You've got to be hungry. hungry. You've got to go after your dream. I love it. And uh, that's how they made it, is they had to just be gutsy, tenacious, and uh, not talk about it. They just went and did it. Hey, that is great. Hey, we're, I'm going to uh, segue a little bit into, we've got our, our coaching tip today, nice. uh, and it, it relates to this. It talks about stirring up business. It'll give you a chance to get a drink of water if you want and all that stuff. Sure. So uh, we are going to uh, run to that right now. It's time for the two-minute tip from Gary Lockwood, the coach of all coaches, the mentor to the Saturday morning CEO. Gary Lockwood, give us your tip for today. Good morning. Gary Lockwood here. A few years ago, my business went through a series. As the business slowed down, revenues decreased, and the demands on my time decreased, too. For a while, I enjoyed the slower pace. Then I figured out we were on a path to financial disaster. Verna, my wife and business partner, finally said, get on the phone and stir up the cosmic dust. So I took her advice and started calls. I called everyone I knew. I called past clients, old prospects, and people from my old phone lists. Also, I got out of the office and attended business mixers, seminars, and other events where business professionals tended to show up. Sure enough, we began to notice that the phone was ringing constantly from prospective clients wanting to know more about our services. Even more interesting, many of the incoming calls were from people we did not contact. It seemed like the very act of outbound activity was causing inbound business. Time and again over the years, I've seen this phenomenon. Positive action directed outward seems to stir up the cosmic dust. It doesn't work if the actions are directed inward. No matter how many times you count the inventory, rearrange the furniture, or redesign your business cards, these inward-focused actions won't cause clients to show up or prospects to call you. So what does this mean for you? Look, You know in your heart that you enjoy the results of this business building action, especially when the revenue starts to come in. So what are you waiting for? Stir up some cosmic dust. That was good advice. I like that. Hey, Nathan, this is Dewey here. I I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, I read an article about, uh, I guess, your aunt. It would be Marie, correct? Uh Uh-huh. And uh, she went to Nashville and did a country uh, album. And... Did you inspire that, or did she uh, oh. do it on her own? Oh, yeah, or? For years, they were known as a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. I tell people I'm not a little bit country. I'm a whole lot of country. <laughs> you know, and she's, she was the first one to, to do a country song that went number one, and that was Paper Roses. And, of course, she's recorded other great country songs. She did a duet called Meet Me in Montana with Dan Sills, um, No Stop in Your Heart, a lot of other great great country songs. And she's just proud that one of us is keeping it country. I didn't inspire her to do country. Uh, I think she uh, she kind of inspired me. Okay, I was just uh, a little bit curious about that story. Yeah, yeah, they're but they're they're really proud of uh, everything that that we're doing out there, and she's been a great mentor. And because of you know some of the contacts that she had in country music, you know that I got to know as a as a kid, I was able to pull out later on in life and utilize to help launch my country career. So, anyways, it's all about networking. It's uh, you got to be good to people because what goes around comes around. Right, you never know if you can work with them. Hey, right. uh, you, you brought up several good points about you know surrounding your people with capable uh, people at excellence, and also share your dream, and you know basically your go-to people that you can you know share information with, yes, and sir. Uh, that won't uh, you know basically throw a dagger at you. But here, here's my question, given that context: um, How do you know who the right people are? Is is there like an indicator? Is this just simply an intuition? Is it a gut feeling? 
Um, it's a little bit of both. You, you should do some research. Uh, you should get some opinions about, I mean, everybody, uh, there's, for every, I was told this when I went to Nashville, Nashville by some of the guys and the artists, this is for every one good guy, there's nine sharks. There, there are a lot of uh, people in this business that will take you for everything you got. You got to know. Uh, you you got to do some digging. You got to you got to fill them out, um, and basically interview them. Uh, you know, Donnie always told me that. He says they need you. You don't need them. And going with that attitude, but ask, ask the hard questions. Uh, you know, do do your own research. Um, find out. You know uh, what their past is. What have they done lately? See, there's a lot of people that uh, say, "Oh, I work for Disney." Well, what'd you do? Sell churros? You know? <laughs> what'd you do for Disney? You know? Uh, and you gotta, you gotta really know what their credentials are, and what have they done lately, or are they living on their laurels, resting on their laurels? You know? And that's the thing is, you gotta be with people that are relevant now. And I'm learning that more and more as I go through my careers. That uh, you gotta surround yourself with people that know what the heck they're talking about. Donald Trump and I worked together a whole bunch, and he told me that one time. He said, "Nathan, I'm not the smartest guy. I just hire the best." And that's mm -hmm. how he's been so successful. You know, George Ross, his, his VP and, all, uh, and uh, senior chair of the, of the Trump organization there, um, he's one of the smartest guys in real estate. So that's why he hired him. You know, and that's, that's what you've got to do in whatever field you're in is don't worry about knowing everything. Just get the people that have the answers to be part of your team. Mm. That, that, you know, isn't that, uh, Dewey, that's uh, kind of a have... common theme, isn't it, with most of our guests, is having a mentor? Yeah, that's why I hired you, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes they don't even need to know that they're on your advisory team. You know, go read a book. Go right. read from Abraham Lincoln and go read from Benjamin Franklin or whoever inspired you. You know, you can learn so much from the past. And uh, I, I just think that, you know, sometimes they, you, your agree team members don't even need to be alive. You know, but go read a book, go go study, and find out how other successful people did it, and then go apply the same principles. One time, I was working with a guy named Brian Tracy, and I asked Brian, I said, Brian, you know, you you created more millionaires than almost anyone I know, and I was wanted to use one of his quotes, uh, which is, says, if you're willing to do what most people want, eventually you can have what most people can't. I said, can I put that in my presentation? He says, Nathan, you can use all my stuff and not even give me credit. Wow. I'm like, excuse me. He says, let me explain something. In Ephesians, it says, there's nothing new under the sun. Where do you think we got it? <laughs> <laughs> and where do you think the people that we got it from got it? In 50 years from now, people will be starving for the same information because they're eternal principles. They just work every single time and so he says you can use all my stuff and not even give me credit and that was a great learning experience for me of course I did give him credit for the quote but uh, the thing is is that it's just like uh, principles like the principle of, of the law of gravity was working a lot longer before you know Newton asked the question why did the apple hit me in the head well the, the law of attraction all these other laws that we're learning about in success they're happening whether you believe it or not. The key is if you can you can learn from other successful people and simply go do what they did. You, obviously, you got to have your own niche. You got to have your own talents and skills and sharpen the saw. Like my friend my friend Stephen Covey once said, you know, you got to keep that that saw sharpened. But you you just learn from successful people. Surround yourself with positive successful people, and simply you know, don't try and recreate the wheel. Just go out and make it happen. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, I want to uh, advice. I want to gear our our topic a little bit now towards uh, yes. one, of, one of the things that we really promoted about this show was uh, this is really a, a great opportunity for someone who is an artist, uh, yes. a, a singer or, or a painter or whatever, Performing. and I'm not one of those people. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can, I can draw flies on a hot summer day, and, uh, and I can uh, play the, the CD uh. player, and that's about it. But uh, for those people that don't have a business mind, uh, you and I talked on, uh, on Skype the other day, uh, mm -hmm. Just one on one about the uh, the difference uh, between a, a hobby and a business, and I thought some of the things that you said were were awesome. You know about trying to choose whether you want to use your talents as a hobby or as business. Can you share some of that with our listeners? Oh yeah, you betcha. You know, my father taught me that principle. He says, Nathan, if you treat this business like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, it, it will pay you like a business. And that applies to any business. Um, if you're doing it half-heartedly, then, then plan on not getting paid so much. And uh, are you doing it just for the money? 
Um, that's that's one thing that uh, I learned from a guy who wrote uh, a great book called Smart Women Finish Rich, Smart Couples Finish Rich. His name is David Bach. He did the the debt diet with Oprah and everything. He and I became good friends. We were in New York City one time, and I was uh, about ready to introduce him on stage. He was going to go out and talk about you know becoming an automatic millionaire. And he asked me this question. He says, Nathan, do you want to finish rich? And maybe he was just testing out his talk on me. But I said, oh, you bet. He says, ha, gotcha. He says, uh, everybody says they want to become rich. Here's the real question. Why? Ah. Oh, you know, and we started, we started talking about our wives and our kids and, and what really matters in life. You know, um, and I, I learned something from him there that, you got to understand your why. There's a great book called Man's Search for ha Happiness, right? And um, Man's Search for Meaning, excuse me. And uh, Dr. Frankel. Uh, if you haven't read that book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, go read that book because in the very first chapter, he says something, and it has everything to do with what I just talked about. Your why. He says, don't aim at success. It cannot be pursued. It must ensue, and can only do so as an unintended side effect to one's dedication to a cause greater than oneself. And so he kind of breaks down what that means. He says, if you understand your why, you can endure almost any how. So whatever business that you're in, why are you in it? Why do you want to become successful in that business? Is it to, to bless lives? Is it, is it to make life easier for people? Is it to – it's got to be bigger than you. It's got to be bigger than money, and that's what David Bach told me. He says, if it's just about making money, you're not going to have the, the oomph or the, the, the guts to go after it. You know, money is fleeting. It's, it's a byproduct of doing something that you're passionate about and having a cause greater than yourself to go out and do it. I happen to love bringing smiles to people's faces. I love to see people escape the world for an hour or two with me and hang out and let their hair down and, and smile and forget their worries for a little bit. And I like to inspire people through music, through the kind of songs that I write. I find joy in doing that. I enjoy doing this motivational speaking because I find that it can have a lasting effect on people's lives. In fact, uh, my, my production company, Entune Productions, our, our slogan is inspire the mind and lift the soul. And that's what we try to do through our music, through live events, through written content, through all everything that I do. I try to inspire the mind and lift the soul. And you can do that in various different ways. But that's my why. That's my passion. What you've got to figure out in your business is why are you doing it? Do you love it? Are you doing it for the right reasons? Do you understand what your why is? And once you do, that's what all you need to focus on. That's the homework today is figure out your why. Why are you doing what it is that you're doing right now? And if you can't answer that, Take some time this weekend and figure that out, and make sure you make sure you figure that out because once you have once it's once you find your why, and as long as it's bigger than you, you're going to be successful. So, so Nathan, an, an artist who, who who maybe answers the question why because they love it, they love seeing people smile and be happy when they hear their music. Yeah. Uh, it, does that mean they can't make it a business? That it needs to be a hobby? Well, they or? can totally make it a business. Okay, so how and do they do that? they got to make their business their business. they got to be actively <coughs> involved in your career and not just hope <coughs> that somebody else gives you a big break. you got to be willing to go the distance and pay your dues. It's not going to happen overnight, like I said. You've got to be willing to put the blood, sweat, and tears into it. But the thing is, when you have passion for what it is that you do, it doesn't really feel so much like work. It feels like I'm going after something. i got a goal in mind. I have it written down, and I'm committed to it. And that's another thing I learned from a, a, you know, some of my friends in, in business, like Brian Tracy. I, I, I pulled out my wallet one time. We were in California. And I said, Brian, check this out. This would be perfect because we're starting our New Year's resolutions here. I said, look at my goals here for this year, what I will do this year. And he looked at that, my goals and read them, and he smiled, and he said, that's great, Nathan. He says, but can I teach you something about goal setting? I said, absolutely, Brian. Teach me. And he says, I want you to take these same goals that you just wrote down. And people, if you're listening, if you've written down your New Year's resolutions, go do this. He says, I want you to write, rewrite these same goals down, but write them as if you're already living them. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I call them goals in the present. And I wrote down, I have this, I do this, I earn this. This is what I do with my career. I'm a successful, you know, uh, entertainer. I, 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 and I just started ex basically describing my very best self and things that are already happening to me in my mind that I'd like to see happen, but I write them down as if I'm already living them. What, this is what I do. I exercise this amount of time every single week, and these are the results I get. And 
and basically, he says, amazing. If you write down your goals in the present, it's amazing how you'll, your mind will automatically start believing what you write down and what you're saying to yourself over and over again, and you'll start living what you wrote down. And it's a really powerful thing, and I started doing that, and I started looking at my goals at the end of the year. It was incredible what I was able to accomplish. I dropped 50 pounds in four week, in four months. Um, wow. I, I started. Uh, I, I transformed. I became a, a better person, a lot more successful. This is when all my music success started to happen. Is I, I, I was focused. I started to happen. So that's a really cool uh, uh, trick you guys can do with your New Year's resolutions this year. Is write your goals in the present. I have this. I earn this. I do this. And whatever that goal is, I weigh this amount. I tell you, at that time, I was overweight. My cholesterol was crazy. My triglycerides were incalculable. It was bad. I mean, it was, it was, I was not a healthy person at the time. So what I did is I got some advice. I was introducing a lot of different people on stage. This guy, Larry Scott, he was Mr. America, Mr. Universe, and all these people. You know, I introduced him on stage, and I said, Larry, I've got to change what it is that I'm doing because my doctor says I could have a stroke at any time. And this was, it was scaring me, you know, it, the pain was big enough to make me make changes. So I figured if I asked this guy who inspired Arnold Schwarzenegger to get into weightlifting, I might learn something. So he said, uh, uh, he says, well, what you want to need, need to do is if you want to lose some weight, there's a two to one ratio. Eat two proteins for every carb and work out maybe two or three times a week. That's it. And he started giving me some specifics. He taught me, uh, you know, how to how to do these uh, different exercises. I said, do you do a lot of crunchies? The guy's 66 years old and his rock solid abs. He says, I do no crunchies. In fact, I worked out my abs in the shower today. I didn't know how, if I wanted to know how he did that, but, <laughs> uh, you know, he, he taught me some cool the things TMI. about isotonics, and I started changing things. I came back and saw my doctor three months later, and he didn't even recognize me. He says, you should, you should write a book about this. How would you do that? And I said, basically, I just got some good advice from someone that knew what the heck they were talking about. And I applied myself. And so no matter what it is you want to do in life, you want to just lose some weight this year, if you want to be successful in business, get yourself a good advisory team. Get yourself a mentor. Start reading a book, which is kind of unheard of nowadays. We're so – everything is podcast, this and that, which is fine. But, but dedicate some time to learning and sharpening the saw. And then go apply. That's the key. It doesn't matter how much you know. It's what you do with what you know that matters. Action it, is the key. That's excellent. Now, you actually, not even knowing this, have uh, brought in a topic that you're going to allow me to segue into also. Let's do it. Is we have uh, Paul David is my personal fitness coach, and he has helped me lose 30 pounds, and we've got a goal of another 50 pounds by March 1st. So I appreciate your recent comments. Uh, he does a two-minute tip for us. And uh, it is uh, on, it has to do with music today, too. So we're going to shift to that real quick. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about what you do other than your music, too. A good friend of mine and, and uh, someone you know also, uh, Marvin Goldstein, world-renowned pianist, yes. uh, was also in real estate for so many years. And he always gives advice to kids to have something else other than your, than your talent to help make some money. So we'll talk about That's your fair. other business when we come back. So right now, though, we'll go to Paul. You know what that music means. It's time for the Saturday morning guru of fitness, Paul David. Good morning, Dennis and Dewey. This is Paul David calling you from Elevate Fitness Studio with your weekly fitness tip. And this week's tip has to do with exercise and music. The way that came about was because just recently we noticed the music in our training studio cut out a couple of times and uh, really noticed that the energy level in the studio dropped. Clients weren't pushing as hard and didn't say anything. And then when the music came back on, it seemed like they perked up again and started pushing and pulling and squatting and doing all the things that makes a smile. They were uh, cranking it out again. So I decided to do just a little bit of digging around the Internet and see what else exercise or what else music does in terms of exercise and found a study out of Ohio State University. And there was a research done um, for about 33 cardiac patients. And they found that while these patients were exercising and listened to music, that they actually improved quite a bit in terms of their consistency of sticking with the exercise routine and their verbal fluency test that they were also testing on improved dramatically. And there was another side effect that they noticed which 
music enhances frontal lobe activity while exercising. Uh, the frontal lobe is that part of the brain that is associated with higher mental functions like thinking, abstract thoughts, or planning for the future. And they found that those people that were exercising as well as listening to music, activity in the frontal lobe increased dramatically. So exercise to music. That's my tip this week. Enjoy. And this is Paul David from Elevate Fitness Studio. There we go. Some great ideas about how music is important for us. And yeah, absolutely. Help us uh, with our business if our frontal lobe is working. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to work on my frontal lobe, that's for sure. Yeah. My back lobe seems to be the one that's in gear. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's, some, that's some good advice right there. So, so tell us about your, your other business there, Nathan, and uh, give us Well, some uh, like you said, multiple sources of income. That's what you got to have. You know, my wife and I have invested in real estate. We think that's definitely door number one for wealth. Um, so we've learned how to do that. We've surrounded with some, ourselves with some really smart people who have showed us the ropes. My grandpa Osmond actually started Osmond Real Estate back in the day, you know, to, to, to diversify their portfolios, to try and be smart. They invested in a lot of real estate. Um, we learned some hard lessons in business where the Osmonds lost over $100 million. Um, and the reason is, is that they were so busy. Out on the road, they just trusted people. You know, never give yourself a rubber stamp. Always sign your own checks. Have be involved in your business, you know, because uh, our, our own bookkeepers, you know, because of uh, some because of trust issues and things, you know, there were two sets of books that were kept. We, our family's been through the ringer a lot. We learned a lot of very expensive lessons in business, but the thing is, is that uh, you should diversify. I'm so grateful that my grandpa, you know, what became involved in real estate because I learned a lot. Um, but uh, I also have uh, not just you know my career going on. I also have a production company called Entune Productions, and um, that's N T U N E Productions. You can even go on Facebook and and click like on our page. But the thing is, is, we produce all sorts of different things, from commercial music to jingles. We do voiceover work. We do video projects. Um, we do uh, graphic design and all sorts of different, uh, you know, different products that uh, that help uh, businesses. And one of the things that uh, I'm really focused on this year is getting that business up and launched and going. And I've been using it mostly to do my stuff. But now I to get involved if they want to do a jingle, if they want to do a, a recording, if they want to have a demo that they can shop around and try and get into this business, fantastic. Come see Intune Productions. Um, if you want to shoot a music video, if you want to have you know write songs and this and that, you know, come hang out with us. Give us a call. Let us know how we can help your business. And it's really, really exciting. So we're getting Intune Productions going. But, yeah, go look us up on Facebook. We're getting our our new website is uh, it's under construction right now but uh, we have a lot of really cool things coming out this year I got a new sizzle reel that just came out but I'm very very passionate about that and I just found that you got to ask yourself where is the money and what I know now see a lot of people are, are, are trying to get into th areas that they have no expertise in they, 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 they need to go back to school and they spend all this time going to school trying to learn something before they know it. they're too old to do it the key is ask yourself where's my passion what do I have passion for? What do I know? Where's the money and what I know? And then find a way to create a business surrounding that. Maybe you're an expert in all the best places to go eat. Fantastic. Why don't you make a business about that? You know, maybe you're, uh, you're just knowledgeable in a certain area. Maybe you know a lot about Legos. Fantastic. Go make a business out of it. But you got to ask yourself, where do I have passion for? And, and where's the money and what I know? And then go make a business. Oh, that's a great idea. What do you, do you have a website that you can give out to people, either the Facebook or your other site? Well, you can go to NathanOsman.com. That's my site there. We'll put a link to, to N2 Great. Productions. But the website will be N2Productions.com, and it's uh, in the process of being created right now. Um, we're, getting, we're just getting this thing up and running and launched. I've kind of just used Intune as, as kind of my vehicle to do all my music and everything else. But now I'm branching out and giving new artists that are coming up and other uh, people that need help with their businesses, whether it be website design or, or graphic design or, or maybe you need some commercial music. If you need a jingle, I've written jingles for all sorts of different companies and businesses and live productions, uh, television shows. And now, you know, uh, I'm, I'm opening that business up uh, even more to let people know that if they're looking, if they need something like that for their business, give us a call. So multiple streams of income is talked about quite a bit in, in any industry. I mean, that's yes, important sir. for us to do that. Do you think it's even more important for an artist to have that? I, I know a lot of artists who feel like, look, if I'm passionate enough and I'm good enough, then I should be able to do this full time and have it be my only source of income. Yeah, never have that, that mindset that people owe me. 
uh, the thing is is that one of the biggest problems, the reason why most people in this business don't succeed isn't because that they're not talented. It's because they don't understand the business side of the music business. And since this is a business show, I think that's very, very important that if you're going to get into this business, know everything about it. At least try to. Understand how things are working. And this business is ever-changing. It is not the same as it was for my father and uncles in the 70s. We've got podcasts. We've got websites. We've got social networking sites. There's a ton of free opportunities to advertise yourself. Go on Reverb Nation. You know, go on all these different websites, Facebook, Twitter. When I first got out there to Nashville, um, Lone Star told me, you got to have a MySpace page. Well, that was the big thing right then. So I went out and I got me one. And, and the thing is, is you've got to stay up to par with what is going on and how to utilize the tools that are available now to, to get your foot in the door. We've got YouTube. More artists are being dis discovered via YouTube than ever before. You know, you look at people like uh, Grace and Chance. You look at uh, Justin Bieber and all these other people that were discovered because of their videos. And you can broadcast yourself. Look what we're doing right now on this radio station. Right. The world is listening in right now. How cool is that? So the, the thing is, is you got to stay up to par with technology. you got to understand the business. How does it work? Ask good questions. Go figure them out and go apply, and you can be successful. Yeah, that's great, great, great advice. And I, I think what we're going to do, uh, we've got to finish up our show with a couple of other uh, items here, but we want to to send you off with a... Uh, a free ticket to return at any time, and uh, in fact, I'd like to. Are you on uh, Google Plus also, or not? Yes, I am. Well, I'd like to do. Uh, I'm just learning it, so I've been in on Facebook and Twitter and all the other stuff. But uh, I think we could do a, a hangout for your fans and our listeners someday. It would be really nice, and they can they can see and ask questions and. Uh, Let's do that. That would be fun. So, and I, I love that you're real. I've got to tell our listeners they didn't get to see you here on Skype, uh, but I saw uh, your son at one time try to come in the door, and you uh, got to shoot him out. <laughs> it just made me feel like, gosh, this guy is so real. And I want everybody to understand that you know you don't have to be uh, Nathan's not in some fancy studio with the uh, security guards outside with guns saying, "Hey, stay out." No, uh, he's I'm wearing a, a dad's old-fashioned root beer hat, man. No, uh, that's what, right. <laughs> what, what, what I really enjoyed uh, is just your um, genuineness, and well, uh, I think Nathan I could be it. the. I, I only hope to be able to 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 reach out to people and and touch lives through what it is that I'm doing. That's where I find my greatest reward and of success. And that's another thing. Before we go, is uh, if you're listening in, just understand that you define what success is. Don't let others define it for you. A lot of people think, do you have to live up to what the Osmonds did? No. Uh, you know, I was with my kids um, recently at a pumpkin patch during Halloween, and I was just telling some, some ghost stories and stuff around a campfire. I was one of the celebrities that was going to be there. Well, they started playing my songs over the, uh, the PA system, and my son, as we were in that little corn maze, he's like, Dad, that's your song. To him, I was the biggest rock star in the world. <laughs> if I never get a Grammy, if I never get any of that stuff, you know what? That's success. If my kids think I'm a rock star, that's all that really matters. As long as I can provide for them doing what I love doing, then that's what counts. Cool. Oh, that's great yeah. advice. Well, we loved having you on the air, and definitely we'll have you back. You're our favorite o Osmond, in fact. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> if, if Donnie and Marie call to get on the show, we're going to say hey. we got to get Nathan's permission first, because so, he's our go. favorite. There you go. Thanks for having me on the show, you guys. Hey, I'm a big thanks, fan Nathan. And, uh, and hope to come back again soon. That sounds great. We'll be, we'll be in touch. Have a good one. Hey, great. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, later. Nathan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boy, that was some great advice, wasn't it, Dewey? Oh, absolutely. He's uh, He might be the uh, the new Nathan Normal here about uh, his presentation. <laughs> Nathan Normal. Very uh, <laughs> genuine. No no phony baloney with, with Nathan. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not really much of a, of a country music fan. I did listen to some of his tunes. My wife is, and you know, I, I think I might get a little more into country because of him. Whoa, very, very, very good. I, I just may have to go out and buy his album. Ah, there you go, definitely. Yeah, and I know how those work. You, you're going to pay twenty dollars for it, and he'll get about forty cents off of it, but he'll be grateful for it. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> so. Hey, we've got a few minutes left here, and I know you've got some uh, some items that you wanted to cover uh, about the economy. 
So we're going to start a little drum roll here and get you going. Drum roll, maestro. There's a short one. Hey, thanks. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I can actually uh, trump what Nathan had to say, but uh, here it is, the economic watch for the 2013 year. According to national statistics, GDP growth should hit 2% throughout the 2013 year, the same as last year, so it looks like status quo there. Interest rates. Little or no increase in short-term interest rates. So if you got some financing to do, it might be a good time to do it in 2013. Business spending should be a 4% gain uh, in this year. And housing sales should be up 8% um, as well as helping GDP in 2013. That's good. Housing sales need to go up. Yeah, they sure do. Hey, unemployment's heading, uh, heading to about 7.5% at the end of 2013, even though the unemployment rate's been relatively skittish. Inflation, 2% in 2013. Matching uh, last year's, but we'll see what happens down the road. I got a little more about to say about that bonds, inflation, interest rates, and retail sales, which is the prime pump for our economy, should be up five percent growth in 2013 after a strong holiday sales. That's it for Economic Watch. Back to you, Dennis. Awesome. Well, we'll keep uh, an eye on those things, and hopefully, uh, that will continue to get better our economy. Uh, we're going to end with our loony, crazy business ideas, and I've got some great ones today, so let's get that kicking off. The loony, wacky, crazy, wonderful ideas that someone came up with. Uh, oftentimes, if you've seen on uh, QVC or some other channel, some new invention, you're sitting there on your couch watching, and you say, hey... That was my idea. Well, that means somebody else took the idea and ran with it, and they're making money with it. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. We're sorry, but due to some technical difficulties, the wacky, crazy business ideas were not recorded. Neither was the end of our show, so we're going to end it now. And we're thankful for Nathan being on the air with us, and hope to have him back again, and hope to have you back, too. Come on back and learn what you need to know to help your business grow or how to start a brand new one. We'd love to help. Dewey and I enjoy sharing our time with you. Have a great day.